I sat down a couple of weeks back and I started to, to just write down some thoughts about a goal. A goal is anything you want to do, become, or have. Now, if this was a motivation talk, I would say to students in the public school, if you don't have a goal and a dream, someone else is going to use you to reach their goals and dreams. So there, so there are a lot of different types of goals and dreams that, that we have. And it was funny when, when Pastor Dennis said, he made the statement, he said, you know, have one goal this year. And Pastor Ray leaned over and said, I'm going to have more than one. And, and, and that's a good thing. And the Bible says, look at it, Luke 2, 52. And if you guys have your notes there, you know, Dennis had put, this is a Donnie Moore quote, according to Dennis. Those who make things happen, those who watch things happen, I was thinking it could be a three, those that let things happen, and those that have no idea of what happened. So Luke 2.52, Jesus grew in wisdom intellectually, statue physically, favor with God spiritually, and favor with men socially. So, so how to set a goal and achieve it? There are intellectual goals such as reading good books, taking a class, learning a new language. Cindy is learning Spanish. It cracks me up. She, she's got it on her phone, and I'm laying in bed at night, and it's like, que bonitos otean. You know, what, she's like, and I hear it, and I'm learning Spanish while I'm trying to go to sleep. I, I want to learn more. I'm like, I'm fascinated how she can just on. Man, technology is amazing. And uh, physical goals. Eating healthy, starting a workout program. You know what's amazing? We respect healing, but we don't respect health. What, what are you talking about? We respect healing. People will stand in an outreach for an hour in line to get someone to pray for them to be healed, but they won't walk 15 minutes a day. We respect healing, but we don't respect health because if we make a goal this year to eat better, not just diet, just eat better. Oh, it's getting quiet in here right now. People are already going down. <laughs> it was hard over the holidays to eat right. How many know what I'm talking about? Yeah, okay. Everybody else can repent for lying later. <laughs> so, so spiritual goals, prayer, study, the Bible, memorizing the Bible. Think about it. 1,189 chapters, 66 books, 800,000 words. Take 60 hours to 66 hours, depending on how fast you read, to read the entire Bible in one setting. So what a goal, to read the Bible through the year. Good goal, huh? P prayer. I mean, we're not asking you to pray an hour a day. How about starting out 10 minutes a day? Every day, 10 minutes, pray. You know what I'm doing every morning now? Cindy will tell you, this is silly. I heard someone, if you take lemonade and, and with warm water and drink it in the morning, it gets everything in your system going. So like, what did I do this morning? I went to Grocery Ella, and we, we were getting hairspray, and I said, get a lemon. So I got a lemon and squished it and had, warm, had it this morning. I feel wonderful. Cindy goes, it's all in your head, Donnie. I go, no, it's not. It's working. <laughs> I'm terrible. I watch those infomercials at night. I, I, and I, they, they, I don't even need the product, but I'm thinking, I'm writing down the number. You know, I need that knife. The knife that Cindy has cannot cut through the, the heel in my boot. That knife can. I need. <laughs> what? It's just, it's insane. I can't help it. I, I'm so easily moved. Social goals, making new friends, spending time with your family, learning to like your family. I mean, just. <laughs> forgiving your sister-in-law. Financial goals. Getting out of debt, saving to buy a new house, new job, asking for a raise. <laughs> That's what Brooke did last week. Brooke's working for us part-time. She already asked her mom for a raise. <laughs> and, of course, Cindy said no. We don't want anything that God doesn't want to give us. And God will never answer a prayer if it adds to your pride. So all our goals, we're filtering through God and we're asking God for direction. And, and so I also realize that every step you take towards self-sufficiency is a step you take away from God. Because I'm always, God, if you could just have God speak to someone and let them give us a million dollars. 
We can do so much more <laughs> if we, we just have this huge gift and we don't have to receive offerings. And, and Lord, it'll, it'll be so awesome. And, and just have, speak to someone to give a million dollars. And the Lord just said, you know, Donnie, every step you take in self-sufficiency is a step you take away from me. So my dependency in living in faith is on God, and so is yours. And, and a lot of times we're, we're just trying to figure out the easy way, and, and sometimes God's saying, no, your, your dependency is, is on me. So number one, your goal or your goals will require discipline. The, the Bible says in 1 Timothy, it's like people are, are hearing about a new diet, and, and it's like, Okay, you know, and they start reading about it, and there's some discipline involved, <laughs> and it's like, I don't care if it's Oprah, I don't care whatever you're watching, and they're talking about a new diet, and then there's discipline, and you're going, oh. Or remember when they had that one belt that you could put it on, and it just shakes while you're watching TV, and it's going to remove your, I wanted to order that. I was going, and then a friend of mine, he ordered it, and he gained 10 pounds. I said, it didn't work. I knew it didn't work. 1 Timothy 4 says, have nothing to do with godless myths and old wives' tales. Rather, train yourself to be godly. Train yourself. For physical training is of some valuable of value, Donna. You go ahead, you can work out. But godliness has value of all things, holding promise for both the present and the life to come. So right there, you start seeing where, where there's some discipline involved in even our walk with God. 1 Corinthians 9 and 24, do not know that in a race all runners run, but only one gets the prize. Run in such a way as to get the prize. Everyone who competes in the game goes into strict training. They do it to get a crown that will not, that will not last, but we do it to get a crown that will last forever. Therefore, do not run like a man running aimlessly. I do not fight like a man beating the air. No, I beat my body. I make it my slave. So after I preach to others, I myself will not be qualified for the prize. So, so the discipline, you know, you can't walk in the unknown will of God until you first walked into the will of God. And, and some people, is that in my notes up there? That's really good. If it is, you can, you can put it up. That, that's, you cannot, there you go. Somebody get a picture of that, tweet it out. You can't walk in the unknown will of God, that you walk in the known will of God. And, and a lot of people are not doing what God's called them to do or asked them to do, and they're waiting for the next revelation. And God's saying, you know what, I spoke to you about. So we know the sovereign will is God's sovereign will, and, and God can do what he wants, how he wants, uh, where he wants without your permission. I don't know if you're aware of that, but he can't because he's God. And, and then the moral will of God, we, we know adultery and, and you don't lie and we know the moral will of God and then God speaks to us about our individual will and what he's he's asking of us and and some of us God has been challenging us to, to walk in his known will and now the unknown will of God as we seek him begins to emerge Habakkuk 2 2 says the Lord replied write down the revelation and make it plain on tablets. Lose 20 pounds, get a raise, new career, new car, learn a new language, buy a home, pay off a debt, go to the Holy Land, time with family, eat right, reduce stress, write down the things that are important to you. You, you got your notes, and, and, and if you don't, they, they have this here. And I'm going to challenge you this week, this, this first month of this new year, to really take this seriously. Now listen to me. If you don't write down your goals and things that are important, how can you at the end of the year look back and evaluate what you've accomplished and not accomplished? Don't just let another year go by. You know, I have a goal this year, and Cindy, you're going to hold me accountable to this. I'm going to finish my book. I started writing a book. And in the book is I'm going through, in three decades of ministering to professional athletes, ministering to professional athletes, there's some things I've learned. And I'm calling it some things I've learned. And chapter one is like, nobody wakes up happy every day. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about attitude. Chapter number two, don't complain about what you permit. You know, you can permit it, don't complain about it. Chapter number three, your setback is a setup for your comeback, and I'm going to deal with failure. So I, I've been writing, and, and this is the year that I'm going to finish that book. I've got to do that. And, and setting aside time to write 
it's difficult, but I have to do it. Now watch. Watch this, because I don't think it's in the PowerPoint, but, but I want three out of 100 people write their goals down. Seven out of 100 people have a visual picture of their goal. 3% of all the people in the world own as much real estate as the other 97%. Watch. When you write down your goals, the chance of those goals coming to pass increases 80%. When you write down your goals, the chance of those goals coming to pass increases 80%. Now, I can come back another time. I can shout and yell, and we can run the aisles and get all excited and and get you worked up. But listen, I want to help you today. I want to help you. Real practical. So so short-term goals, 30 days to three months, that's a short-term goal to me. Medium-term goal is is a year. Long-term goals, anything two to three three years out. Your greatest goal should be to know God. Okay, that's pretty obvious. Nobody cares more about your goals and your dreams than the one who birthed them in you. And that's what you're doing in this season of January. You're allowing the Holy Spirit to birth some things in you that, that need to change. And if you say, hey, how many of you want things to change in your life? And everybody's like, yes, I want things to change. How many want to change? He's like, change my wife. No, how about changing you? Change change my husband. No, how about you changing? It's getting quiet. Amen, brother. That's a really good point. I I like that even though I I didn't want to hear it. (laughs) Okay, number two. Your goals will require focus. The Bible says Habakkuk in 2.2, make it plain. Make your goals clear and attainable. The clearer your goal, the greater your faith. Your faith will be portioned to your clarity. You're only one focus away from a desired goal. Remember we've been talking about audacious faith and believing God and, and, and just trusting and stepping out? Well, little binoculars never see the big picture. you got to see big. You're only one focus away from desired goal. Where you focus your attention, you create strength and momentum. Where where you focus your attention, there, there you create strength and momentum. The more you focus on the goal, the method for obtaining it will emerge. As you begin to focus, as you as you begin to look, as you you begin to study, as you begin to meditate, all of a sudden. The, the, the way of accomplishing that goal and the steps begin to emerge. Focus is the key to the laser beam. Focus is the key to martial arts. One thing I do, I don't look to the left or the right. My heart is fixed. Your faith will work with your focus. And, and you got to learn to protect your focus. When I'm speaking to professional athletes, I will talk to them about the importance of your focus. Why? Because if they don't protect their focus, you know how many guys I've seen in 20, this will be my 29th season working professional athletes that have eaten their way, partied their way, womanized their way out of the game of baseball. Why? Because they didn't protect their focus. Write this down. Anything left unprotected will be stolen. Anything. Whether it's your car, your house, anything left unprotected in our house or our driveway it's kind of long and um there, there's a guy that I, I know that he wants to thank me because he's such a nice thief he just checks to see if my door is open he'll steal my cologne um i know at least he has one of my toomey bags i don't know who the thief is he doesn't mess anything up it's just when i forget in my driveway to un to lock my car something gets stole out of it it's crazy but, but he's a nice thief. He doesn't, like, break anything. He just opens the door and takes what's available. And I know this guy smells good because he's got... I don't know how many bottles of my cologne. I feel like he waits and just walks down our driveway and checks the doors. It's crazy. Why? Because anything left unprotected will be stolen. Your goals generate your greatest joy. 
which energize you. What, what is the, the thing that most, I mean, be specific, measurable, realistic, time bound, job where, car, what color, year, weight, how many pounds? See, your goals will require focus. Number three, your goals will require relationships. The importance of association. You cannot succeed alone. 1 Corinthians 15, do not be misled. Bad company corrupts good character. Every relationship in your life will make a deposit or withdraw. <laughs> oh, gosh. Every relationship in your life will make a positive deposit or withdraw. Now, write this down. Whoever has your ear has influence. Whoever has your ear has influence. Be careful who you let speak into your life. You know, people are like elevators. Some take you up and some take you down. <laughs> I'll say it again. People are like elevators. Some take you up, some take you down. Remember when Jonah was full of rebellion? He, he, God told him that he wanted him to go to Nineveh, and he got on a ship and was headed to Tarshish, and then he was there on the boat, and, and they couldn't figure out because they got in a storm what was going wrong, so they started throwing stuff on, off the boat. Remember that? And, and finally, they came to the conclusion it wasn't what was on the boat. It was who was on the boat. <laughs> it wasn't like Jonah said, hey, guys, I'm the whole problem here. I'm just going to slip off the back. No, they had to throw them over. I'm going to tell you something right now. Write this down. There's some people you need to throw off your boat. It was... <laughs> It wasn't what was on the boat. It was who was on the boat. How many know bad people don't leave your life voluntarily? Try this side over here. I, write this down, Cindy. Bad people don't leave your life voluntarily. There's some people you just got to throw off. They didn't say you don't love them. Just there's some people that you need to get off your boat. Because why? Association. My dad used to say it this way. He said, son, he goes, you can't fly with the eagles running around with turkeys. <laughs> and I'm not going to spend a long time here. Let me tell you how to ad identify an enemy. Now, I'm not just talking about the enemy of, of you know, us as, as Satan. But I'm talking about people in your life that try to hold you back from your God-given destiny. Number one, anybody that knowingly distracts you from your goal. Anybody that willingly distracts you from a goal. You, you, gotta, you, gotta, you gotta watch the people in your life. See, there are some, if someone is in your life and they're not giving in your life, they're eventually gonna take something out of your life. Beware of climbers. Those are people that are in your life that want something, but they don't wanna give anything. They're, they're constantly... You know, the, the complainers, let me just say this, and I want to say this loving to you, and I'm trying to be as nice as I can. There are some people that are in your circle, and, and the circle is, if you're doing all the giving to everybody, you need to get a new circle of friends. Because if you're the one that's being sapped continually of energy and, and being taken from, then, then you need to look outside and decide that there's some other folks. Because people that are genuinely in your life, that, that, are, that are there, they're, they're pushing you toward your God-given goal. Goals require relationships. Number two, an enemy is anyone who weakens your influence with others. Three, anyone that's in your life, like I said, for what they can get. And then lastly, anyone who tries to weaken your passion through criticism. Every man, every woman has a, a, a woman has a queen and a fool in her. Every man has a king and a fool in him. And which one do you speak to? If you speak to the greatness in people, that, that's the one that will rise up. And so often we allow people in our lives that they're not speaking words in our life that are pushing us forward. They're, they're, they're words that are critical you got to be careful, and I'm not saying people that bring correction. I'm talking about people with critical spirits. And, and you got to watch out for a backbiter. A backbiter is just a backstabber that has temporarily misplaced their knife. <laughs> Write that down. A, a backbiter is just a backstabber that has temporarily misplaced their knife. Be, be careful 
of, of people that are in your life that are highly critical. Because I don't need you to come in my life and you shred me all the time and leave your emotional droppings everywhere where I'm, I'm paralyzed because of your criticism. I don't mind someone correcting me in love. But, but I got to be careful who I let in my life. Because there are some people in your life that will steal your goals and dreams. And so your goal will require relationships. You don't get there by yourself. How many know the old saying in the South, if you see a turtle on top of a fence post, he didn't get there by himself? <laughs> Draw a picture of that, Kelly. There's a turtle on a fence post. He didn't get there by himself. Now I'm going to say something right now that I want you to catch, Okay. Because your, your goal will require discipline and your goal will require focus. Your goal will require relationships. I only have two more points. Number four, your goal will require pursuit. You're only qualified for the goals you're willing to pursue. The proof of desire is pursuit. You have no right to anything you have not pursued. I'll say it again. You have no right to anything you haven't pursued. Young people, get your camera out. Just take a picture of that. Tweet it. You have no right to anything you have not pursued. The proof of desire is pursuit. God always favors the aggressive and the persistent. Persistent reveals passion. That's a key word. Persistence reveals passion. Passion is important in all of our lives. What what are we passionate about? The Bible says in Luke chapter 11 verse 10, for anyone what? Ask, receives. He that knocks will find. And to him that knocks, the door will what? Be opened. What do you want? The blind man. What did he say? I, I want to see. God will give me everything he wants to give me. No, he won't. If, if, if God, you know, if God wanted to comb my hair, he'd, he'd give me a brush. No, no, no. I, I didn't have any hairspray today. I need to go get some. Well, if God wanted me to have a job, he'd give me one. God's not going to ring your doorbell, come in your house with a job application. Amen. Thank you. That one, amen. <laughs> He's going to give you according to your faith. Remember the whole series on faith? There's a reason. The woman with the issue of blood, she had to press through the crowd. There, were, there was persistence. Jesus didn't heal everybody, but he healed everybody that pursued him in faith. Amen. Hebrews eleven six. 6, but without faith it's impossible to please God. We, we quote that, but read all of it. He who comes to God must believe that he is, and he is a rewarder of those who diligently so your goals will require pursuit. Now, I'm going to say something right now that's really critical, and I don't think it's in the PowerPoint, so you, you got to write this down. Because never feel hostage to yesterday's goal. Never feel hostage to yesterday's goal. Never feel captive to something you wanted yesterday. Your willingness to walk away from a dream that no longer excites you is very crucial. Because people sometimes, they start holding on to things and they're holding on to things and they're trying to make them happen and they're being persistent, but you've got to have this revelation. You've got to be willing to let go of something that doesn't excite you anymore. If you wanted it now, you're going to go after it. See, desires change. Needs change. Things that excite you change. And you've got to be sensitive to those seasons in your life where God is trying to get you to let go of something because he's trying to move you into something that's new for your life. And he does that by the things that excite you, that energize you. And as we go in, along in life, there, there are things that, that I'm seeing before me that God is, is exciting me about doing it. I never thought of it writing a book. What do I have to say? But when, when you get into your 50s, you've lived long, long enough I think, where you are qualified to speak some things because you have something, in my opinion, to say. I, I got an invitation uh, last week to speak uh, in Louisiana. Interesting enough, one of the youth conventions they asked me to speak at is where Tim lives now in, um, in, in Louisiana. 
And then they called me last week to come and speak to all the pastors and, and in Louisiana at a conference. And I'm like, what do I have to say to pastors? So initially I was going to say no. And I started praying about it. I said, God, do I have anything to say to pastors? I, I don't pastor. So I'll just come over and meet with Dennis and get his notes. And he'll help me put a message together for pastors. Because I, I, I don't know what to say to pastors. But, but I, I feel like I've lived long enough now and been in the ministry over 30 years where I can impart something that would be beneficial to them. And, and so that excites me. And so we, we got to be we got to be aware. The Bible says in Psalm 37, 4, delight yourself, O Lord, and what? He will give you the desires of your heart. So your goals require discipline. Your goals require focus. Your goals require relationship. And your goals will require pursuit. Be open to embrace new things that God puts in your heart. We, we don't want anything God doesn't want us to have, but God will never Answer a prayer if it adds to your pride. So I want what God wants. And God has already begun to put some of these goals and dreams and aspirations in your heart. And we're just going through steps that are going to help you to get there. All right, number five. Your goal will require you to control your words. This is difficult for some of us. It really is. Your goal will require you to control your words. Proverbs eleven twenty one says, life and death are in the power of the tongue. See, your words are signposts to others, painting the direction your life is moving. We'll say it again. Your words are signposts to others, pointing in the direction your life is moving. Whatever, listen to me, you constantly or consistently say, you attach consistently the words I am, you become. Whatever you attach consistently to the words I am, you become. I, I am defeated. I, I can't do this. I, I'm not going to be able to accomplish this. I, I don't know. I, I, I am. See, stop talking defeat. Don't use victim vocabulary. When the enemy comes against your life, Find scripture that applies to what you're going through. Stop negatively in your life by your words. Write this down. Speaking negatively, speaking negatively will hurt you. Speaking positively never will. If, if you're speaking negative, continue. It's going to hurt you. But speaking positively. It's never going to hurt you. Some of us, we, we find ways to be negative. We, we talk about our weakness. We buy books about our weakness. We have others tell us what they think about our weakness. We, we speak about our weakness. We, we got to be careful. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 13, or verse 14 says, From the fruit of his words, a man shall be satisfied with good. I've heard it said this way, your miracle is in your mouth. Your miracle is in your mouth. Instead of saying, oh, this is too tempting, I can't control my appetite, say, listen, I'm going to be controlled by the Spirit, not by my flesh. My body's a temple of the Holy Spirit. I'm going to take care of this temple. I'm going to gain strength from the promise of God's word. Man, you start speaking like that. I started a little faith in you right now, didn't I? You... What? Well, instead of saying there's no hope for the economy, I I'm never going to get out of death, a debt, I, I say, I, you know, it doesn't matter what's going to happen in the world's economy. God's my provider. I, I refuse to live in fear. My needs will be met. You'll never trust God to help you make wise financial decisions with peace when, when you're speaking negatively all the time. See, words... I don't think this is in the PowerPoint. Write this down. Words that produce a desired result in yourself are very important. And, and, and never say anything you don't want anyone else to believe. Don't say anything you don't want someone else to believe. You, you got to guard your words. Now, I'm not trying to get into a super confession where every negative thing you say is going to come to pass. But have you ever been around someone that is continually just negative? Negative, 
negative. And as they speak defeat, they speak these negative words, there's no change because the Bible says out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And so if I get around somebody for about 10 minutes, I know what they believe. I, I, I can tell when I'm with somebody for a period of time, I mean, you spend a few hours with somebody, you, you'll know what they believe because out of the abundance of the mouth, you know, I mean, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. But think about this for a moment. I'm, I'm wrapping this up, but I want, I want you to think about this for a moment. Um, what I speak to, what comes out of my mouth, what I give verbiage to grows. It flourishes. And so I, I've got to come to a place where I'm able to control my words. Start saying what God says about you. Romans 8, there's, I'm more than a conqueror. 1 Corinthians 15, 57, thanks be to God who gives me the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Oh, Lord, I thank you that 1 John 4, 4 says, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Right. Oh, God, thank you that you didn't give me a spirit that makes me a slave again to fear. But, but a, a slave not to fear, but a spirit of sonship. Thank you, Lord, that I can do all things through Christ, Philippians 4, 13. And, and you start speaking the word. Get those Bibles out there. Open them up. <laughs> begin to get, to get the word and begin to speak that out. Watch what will happen. And so, so what happens, you guys, you're, you're not disagreeing. You know, people say, well, you know, you're, no, 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 you're... You're not saying that the problems don't exist, but what you're saying is this is the answer. Yeah. As you keep speaking the answer by faith. Man, this is good. See, your words create pictures in your mind. Those pictures decide what you believe, and what you look at the longest will affect you the most. You know, Cindy and the kids think sometimes I'm a little strange, but if you go out into my weight room, I have a board that has all the pictures of students, literally, Hundreds of maybe uh, over a thousand pictures of students. I know we got everything on our phone now, but I have actual pictures. And I was looking at the pictures the other day, and it's fascinating. I mean, I, I, a lot of those, I, I, Devaney's on there when she was like a teenager. I mean, it's, it's crazy, the pictures I have uh, on my, my board. And to me, that's a picture board. It's a gold board. It's a dream wall. Do, do you have anything like that? Well, I, I started taking, I had a bunch of cards the other day. And I, I took them all in the ba bathroom, and they're, they're, they're cards for Father's Day cards. And, and some cards that Cindy's given me, you know, um, on Father's Day and, and telling me what a great husband I am. And so, you know, I did. I got thumbtacks, and I'm putting them all up in the bathroom. Because every morning when I get up and I wash my face, I'm going to look to the left. I'm going to be reminded of what a great dad I am. Because the devil tells me a lot of times I'm a lousy dad. He tells me that I miss it. But when I, I read those, those letters from my daughters and from my son, man, something just goes on. Yeah, I'm not that bad. I make mistakes, but I'm doing pretty good. Huh? Get, get a dream wall. Because words create pictures. And, and pictures are important. If, if I just was in Oregon, and I, I got up early in the morning to go speak, and it was snowing. It was beautiful. But, man, I wouldn't want to live there. It was so cold. I was just walking out to the house. Oh, gosh. I, I didn't even bring a jacket. I, I mean, it was just, what are you thinking? And the pastor goes, it's only 30 degrees. 30 degrees! So I, I, when I think of Oregon, I think of rain and snow. I'd like to visit, but I wouldn't want to live there. Man, what do you think of Maui? Oh, that's a good thought. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. Right. Laying on a beach under an umbrella, sipping on a sea strawberry lemonade. For me, it was just a Snapple, a nice cold Snapple. Don't anyone say a cocktail, please. You're in church this morning. Oh, man, you don't put a picture, if you're trying to lose weight, of Porky Pig on the refrigerator. <laughs> oh, 
as the worship team comes and we close, I'm, I'm going somewhere with this. I, I, I'm trying to create within you this morning the capacity to expand and begin to look at what you want to see accomplished in your life this year spiritually. You know, you know what's amazing when you think of, and, and this is, let me just say a few more things and I'll, I'll wrap it up. Um, when you talk, or what you talk about this most is what you build your faith in. Be careful of what's coming out of your mouth. James tells us that, chapter 3. Your tongue's like a rudder. The rudder controls the direction of your ship. Our tongue controls the way our life moves. And so we want to concentrate on, on talking right. But I was thinking about this, you guys, in decisions. Just hear this last point. Let's just, just grasp this, okay? Right decisions done repeatedly over time compounds success. We have this idea, if we make one right decision at a conference, a camp, a church service, or an event, that decision will carry us until we make our next major decision. And it is true of our camps. See, some people think that one major decision will carry them for the rest of their lives. Events are good for decisions. But it takes a process to change a life. It's a process. Time is a, is a great interrogator. It takes time. Events are good for decisions, but it takes a process to change your life. Sometimes we overestimate the event or moment, and we greatly underestimate the day in and day out process. Golly, if some of you could see how much you've changed in the last year, you'd be blown away. See, we're not where we want to be, but thank God we're not what we used to be. Remember that old saying? Thank God. So, so this life, this, 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 this process that we're in, we're growing, we're changing. I know we're afraid in the church of the word evolving, but, but now you guys... As a parent, I, I look at some of, you know, my daughter Brooke goes, you were so easy on DJ. You're just, you know, he's the youngest, he's the baby. And, and you just, you're easy on him. And, I, and, you know, DJ just turned 19. And one day I said to Brooke, I said, no, we just didn't know very much about parenting. You were like our first test case. And, huh? Just, it's true. And at the time you get to the, to the last one, it's not that, that somehow that, that you're easier on them. You just really found out what you thought was important. And what you thought was important really wasn't that important. So, so, so you learn. And, and you grow. And, and you change. Thank God. Think about the cumulative amount of time if you just started walking 15 minutes, 10 minutes a day. Just, you just decided that after dinner, you're going to go for a walk. And you did it. 10, 15 minutes a day. After about five or six months, you might not see anything the first week. Just, just think about this, Donnie Moore. If you just rode an hour a night, just one hour a night, by the end of the year, you'd probably have a book. No, no, but what do we do? We, 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 first of the year, you know when they sell more gym memberships, it's January, why? Yeah, I'm gonna work out. I'm gonna get ripped. I'm gonna get shredded. I'm gonna... I'm going to have, I'm a six pack. I mean, I got a one pack, but I'm going to have a six pack. I'm... And you find yourself in front of the TV doing the latest crazy. I'm gone, man. I'm, yeah, yeah. God, it's crazy. And then after about a month, it's just like, I, get, I... I need a cheeseburger. And see, the thing is the one cheeseburger doesn't hurt you. Because you, you can eat right all week and then you can have one cheat day. Huh? Enjoy a nice slice of pie. Yeah, enjoy, you know, Deanna's mud pie. You can, it's really good. Just, but you can have mud pie every day. Then you look like a mud pie. It just really <laughs> can affect you. You go on the wonderful cafe and start counting your calories 
eat a few things and there's other things you go, I just need to pass on that today. Although Kelly's charming and has a lot of things to offer, but there's certain things that you're gonna, just go ahead and rub them on your waist because that's just where it's going anyway. There's accumulation value of investing small amounts of time in certain activities over a long period of time. Did you catch that? There's a cumulative value of investing small amounts of time in certain activities over a long period of time. See, we don't want anything God doesn't want us to have or anything God doesn't want to give us. But there's God's part and, and there's our part. So nobody wants you to achieve your goals and dreams more than the one that's birthed them in you. But make a decision this January, this month, It's not that my wife's going to change or people around me are going to change. I'm going to change. It starts with you. And you'd be surprised if you begin to change what will really happen. So your goals require discipline. Your your goals require focus. Your your goals require relationships. Your goals require pursuit. and, And your goals require you to control your verbiage. It, it's time for you to realize the miracle is in your mouth. And speaking negatively will hurt you. But speaking positively will never hurt you. Make a decision today that God, these are some things that, that you are putting in my heart. There's some things that you're dealing with me. So, so I'm going to take this setting goals, godly goals, and and I'm gonna gonna take some time this week, I'm gonna write them down. In about three months, get them out, because some of you got some short term, some of you got some medium term, and some of you got some long term goals. And then you're able next year to say, I I, I accomplished 80% of this. Or I, I, I did the whole thing. Or you know what? I, I didn't do so well in this area. But you know what? You don't condemn yourself. Why? Because it's a process. I, I'm going to be a better parent. I, I, I'm going to be a better husband. I, I am going to be more committed to my prayer time. I am going to. I got my new Bible. I paid money. They didn't give it to me. I bought my Bible. Ryan out back. Did he even give it to me? I'm the speaker this morning. I'm Donnie Moore. Will you, will you autograph that for me? Can you like put something in there like real deep? <laughs> Look at that. You can read it from the third row. See now, you know, when you get my age, it, it's amazing at night how things begin to get a little blurry. And you're like... So, so, you know what I'm talking about. This is big print. I mean, you can even use this for a weapon. So when it attacks you, you could hit them. You could hurt them. Now, this, is, this is amazing. Look at this, Cindy. You could even use this. Your eyes are starting to, well, I won't confess that. You're healed in Jesus' name. See that? It's my Bible. I'm going to write all in this thing. I can't wait. It's got red letters. That's when Jesus wrote. He wrote in red. Love your enemies. See what it opened up to? Gosh, I need that right now. Um, This year, make it the best year. Make this year the best year. Would you you bow your heads, close your eyes? Father, we, we, gosh, I, I preach so many different messages at this church. But today, Lord, we're just, we're just pausing and reflecting on this new year we're about to enter into. And God, what, what you're going to do in all of our lives. Father, I'm so glad that there's a new day. And it says your mercies are, are new every morning. God, I thank you that you're the God of restoration and you're the God of the new. And God, you give us a new week a new month. And Lord, this last year, 2015, has come to a conclusion. 
And God, many stayed up for the new year to come in and they weren't just excited about the new year. They were just thrilled that last year was ending. And God, you make all things new. And for those that had a tough 2015, God, the word for this year is hope. Hope that you put in our hearts. This, this is the beginning of some good things and some new things. And Father, I, I just thank you that you are a good father. And God, you want what's best for us. And, and what I'd like to do with, with your heads bowed and your eyes closed, if there's somebody here and you haven't said yes to Jesus, maybe you're a visitor, maybe you've been coming for a while, but the best thing you can do at the beginning of this year is to receive Jesus Christ right now, today. The day is a day of salvation. Every week, no matter where I speak, I always give people an opportunity to receive the Lord Jesus Christ. You'll never know your destiny until you meet the God who's determined it. So with your heads bowed, your eyes closed, if there's somebody here and, and the Lord's speaking to you and you know that you are not saved or you're not sure, if you were to breathe your last breath, you, you, you don't know if you go to heaven. And, and today, I want to pray for you. And I'm not going to ask you to stand up or come forward, but wherever you're at in the building, if you're here and you say, Donnie, will you include me in that closing prayer? I'd like to give my heart to Jesus Christ and receive him in today to my life. It's where it starts. If, if that's you, would you just slip your hand up and I'll look around the room. God bless you over here. God bless you in the back. Thank you right there in the middle. Thank you so much, sweetheart. Thank, thank you. Thank you over here, sir, and, and to the right. Thank you so much. Thank you for all those hands. And I realize some of those hands are recommitments. But that hand represents a life. And for some, this is your first day, first opportunity that, that you really are receiving Jesus Christ in your life. Now, you might have had opportunities in the past, but today is the day you're saying yes to Jesus. <laughs> this is an awesome day. You can write this day down. You can remember it. Some of us, we don't remember the exact day. We remember the time or we came into the kingdom like a, it was a process. But some of you today, I really feel the Holy Spirit is saying, today is a day of salvation. This is your day. This is your moment. This is for you. And you're receiving Jesus Christ. And we don't take that lightly. It's wonderful. So, so those that raised your hand, would you pray this prayer? And those that are here that believers, part of this body, we're going to pray this prayer also together. And, and people are going to rejoice. The decision you made today, the greatest decision you could ever make, is to receive Jesus. So let's pray out loud, shall we, together? Would you repeat these words after me, dear Jesus? Thank you for speaking to me. Jesus, I surrender to you. I can't change myself, but you can change me. Come into my heart. Make me the person that you want me to be. God, I'm so glad you didn't come to take away my fun, but you came to take away my pain. So I give you my pain. I give you my hurt. I give you my sin, I give you my confusion, and I receive your forgiveness. I receive Jesus Christ as my Lord, as my Savior today. Jesus, thank you for saving me. Now, would you all stand, everybody, please? If you prayed that prayer for the very first time and meant it, and, and you prayed to receive Christ, and you know today's the day you gave your life to Jesus would you just put your hand up wherever you're at? Yeah. Anybody just wait? Yeah. People over here. God bless you, honey, in the back. Man, we, we have some materials for you in the back. Anything we can do to help you. But this is what I want to do before uh, we all go to a great lunch. I want to pray over you. 
And particularly, I want to pray for some of you that have, 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 are in need of a miracle physically. And, and, and what I want to do is, if you're here and you're ba- battling cancer, a serious de- disease, lupus, if you're here today and, and you have heart disease, uh, blood pressure off the chart, um, I just feel like somebody that was just diagnosed with um, degenerate heart failure. You're, there's a, a, your arteries are, are really clogged up, high cholesterol. There, there's people here with, with various issues. And as I was naming those, and I wouldn't do anything at all to embarrass you, but I want to pray for you. And so if, if that's you, um, would you just hold your hand up? And and what I'm going to do, yeah, would you put a hand on a person just right there with them over in the back? Just put your hand on the shoulder over here. We're just going to, there's a corporate anointing here. There's no, Donnie Moore has to lay hands on me. People are going to lay hands on you. Anybody right now physically that is battling a serious, I mean, we have colds, we we have the flu, and those are, are, are things that are certainly serious. But there's some of you right now, I'm talking, you hadn't raised your hand yet, but you're really facing a mountain. And, and you need a miracle today. You, you need a miracle. And um, if that's you, would you just hold your hand up real quick? No, nobody's going to ask you exactly what it is, but today you need a miracle over here. And, and this precious lady, Dennis, right to the left of you. God, I thank you. There, that, there's nobody, I want everybody that has a hand up, somebody put your hand on them, please, please for me, would you do that? Holy Spirit, you are the manifester. Holy Spirit, I'm asking you to manifest healing. God, I curse cancer in the name of Jesus, lupus and every other blood disease. God, I pray for a miracle for those that Lord are maybe not even here this morning, but they're on our minds. God, they're, they're battling right now a life-threatening disease. Miracle power of God. We, we release you by faith. The Bible says we shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Lord, Isaiah 53, 5 says you are pierced for our transgressions. You are crushed for our iniquities. The punishment upon you brought us peace. By the stripes that are upon your back were healed. Lord, your word says in Proverbs chapter 4, verse 20, pay attention to what I say. Listen closely to my words so that I'm out of your sight. Keep them within your heart for the life to those who find them and health to a man's entire body. Father, your word says in 1 Peter 2, 24, that you, Lord, when you hung on the tree, you died for our sins. God, so we would live for righteousness and by your stripes, we are healed. Father, you watch over your word to perform it. God, and we simply in faith lay our hands on those and we ask for healing. Healing in the name of Jesus. God, heal that asthma. God, heal right now in the name of Jesus. Heart disease, blocked arteries. Father, right now, cancer, let it wither and die. God, when they go back for the checkup, Lord, they'll see there's a miracle. Today, we believe for miracles. Today, we believe. Here's what I want to do. I want to pray a blessing over you. So what I want to do is they sing, every one of you that want to commit your year to the Lord, This is not per se a message on vision, but this is a message that God has been speaking clearly to my heart. And I'm this month writing, I'm writing down things that the Lord has put in my heart. And I wanna challenge you and Pastor Dennis will do the same thing. But I'm asking you as a body of believers as you've gone through the, the, the campaign to, to restore some things as far as the facility, but there's a restoration personally in your life that God 
is going to restore. And I just really have a word. And I preached on the, the prodigal son here. But I don't know who this is for. But, but I want you to get this. This year is the year 2016 that your child that's away from God is, is going to come home. This is the year. And I, I want to stand with you in faith that this is the year of surrender. That this is the year that God is reversing in their life the direction through them surrendering and them coming to the Lord, them coming home, coming back to God. This is the year. That's been a prayer, a goal for such a long time. As Deanna sings a song, I'm going to ask you to, to do something very physical in the sense that instead of standing there, I'm going to ask you to slip out in the aisle. And even if we fill the aisles, would you come? And I want you to stand in, in a submission to say, God, this year, the goals that you put in my heart, by faith, I, I am going to take these notes seriously and, and I'm going to do some writing. And God, this year, I have some things that I want you to accomplish in my life, in my family, in my job, my career. I mean, really serious stuff that you, that you really been thinking about. I, I, I put here the red hot pokers. Who encourages you? You know, I got that in my notes, red hot pokers. You know, you know what? Red hot poker is the thing you take and put it in the fire and you probe and you move the fire around. And I put here... You can look at it in your notes. I didn't go to it in the message, but who encourages you? They give you an attitude lift. I got this from, um, I think, Dennis, and John Maxwell said it is the guy that I think. Who teaches you? They give you a mental lift. Who prays for you? They give you a spiritual lift. Who stretches you? They give you a growth lift. Who loves you? They, they give you a life lift. Who helps you? They, they give you a ministry lift. I have realized that we can't do our camps, and Cindy uses the word community, without all of us together. I, I realize that I can't do life. I need you. We need one another. Paul said that we both can come, we come together and we're mutually encouraged by everyone's gift. We all have blind spots. We need one another. And I know I'm gone longer than I should, but I'm trying to nail this in your heart. I, I'm trying to take and put this down in you. If you start setting some goals and you release your faith, they're going to they're gonna come to pass. They're going to come to pass. But it starts with you. How many are willing enough to take that step of faith this year and say there's going to be change? There's going to be change because it starts with me. Would, would you do that? If that's you, when they sing, would you just come and stand with me? I'm going to pray over you and turn it back to Pastor. Come on. But just let me just give you a couple of words. I feel like the Holy Spirit's put on me. One, you're in transition. There's someone here that you've been praying and you're going to be in transition. There's a new job. There's a new opportunity. And, and you already began to sense this stirring that, that God's taking you in, in a different direction. And, and you need to let go, what I said, of that season of your life that that no longer excites you there's something that god has been putting in you that is 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 causing you to it, it's almost a holy discontentment in a sense that that is looking to that new place with excitement that's a good thing there, there are others that are here right now and um i, I just want to really really encourage you you're in process you're 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 in a place right now where you're thinking man does God really know? I felt like that word in the beginning that the utterance started. And I felt like that it, as it was coming, it just God began to speak to me to tell you that he knows where you're at. He knows what street you live on. He, he hasn't forgotten you. And, and you're going to come through this. You, you right now in our place right now of trust. God, I trust you. And, and you're going to come through it. And I, those words of affirmation are not just words I'm speaking. I just felt it deep, deep inside of me. And I just believe today when we prayed that there's miracles that, that happen and you're going to see them in this next week come to pass. I'm going to turn it back to Pastor. And if you need special prayer, I'll be down there.
God bless you. It's been a great morning together, huh? And uh, thank you so much. It's great to have Donnie and Cindy Moore with us. I'm glad to have them on the uh, preaching and teaching team of Green Valley. So that's a pretty special thing. Uh, So uh, right now, right? Right now. So uh, right now, make a decision. If you would change your ways, you must change your days. So make a commitment right now to uh, change something in a positive way. So, okay, well, let's pray for each other, huh? For a new year, a blessed year. And uh, thank you so much for your being here today. And I'm looking forward to a great year. Why don't you uh, do what we start out the morning doing? Take a hand of somebody next to you if you like them. And then when I say the amen, I'd like to invite you to uh, express a blessing. Turn to somebody next to you. It could be you're standing with a family member or a friend or somebody that you don't know. But just speak to them that uh, you uh, want, desire God's best for them this year. That God would be more real to them than ever before. Our Father in the heavens, how great you are and how good you are. Thank you for the day of new beginnings and a fresh start. Thank you, Lord, that though we cannot go back and redo last year or redo the things of our past, we can go forward because of your faithfulness to us, that you are good and uh, you release us from our regrets and resentments. We can go forward right now to be the people of God that you want us to be. I thank you. May your love, Heavenly Father, be multiplied upon this household of faith, upon our guests, upon our family members and friends. May they experience this year and even right now the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. And may the friendship of the Holy Spirit be real to each one this day and this year. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks for joining with us today in our streaming of our service and our message. We're grateful that you joined with us. And if we can serve in any way, we'd be glad to do that. Just check out our website. That'll get you connected in any way that you might like to. And uh, that is greenvalleychurch.net. And we wish you the best and know that you really do matter to God. Have a great day.